Hello, this should be a very interesting episode of the House of Lechmere. I'm here in the graveyard of St Matthew's Church in Bethnal Green, a very historic church with a lot of connections. The Crays were, were their funerals were here. And in this episode, I'm going to be discussing why the Jack the Ripper killing stopped and in particular why Charles Lechmere stopped. A lot of people have been asking me this question. And here to discuss it, I'm with Jamie Boyle, an author and YouTuber whose uh, biggest project on at the moment is about the well-known boxing promoter Mickey Duff. Yeah, I'm uh, over for well, kicking on for 90,000 words with Mickey Duff. I've interviewed 43 very well-known world boxing names. Uh, got about another seven to go, and that uh, and that that'll be it. I think that's going to be a blockbuster when it mm. comes out. Anyway, so what we're here to discuss today, because you're you're also very interested in the Jack the Riff murders, is why did Charles Lechmere stop? So, firstly, it's a myth that serial killers never stop. We've mm. got several well-known examples of serial killers mm -hmm. who stop. There's, for example, the one known as BTK, Dennis Rader. He stopped. There's the Joseph D'Angelo, who's known as the Golden State Killer. He stopped, and uh, his his crimes were thought to be committed by several different people. They were mm. they were thought to be unconnected, but there was lots of different types of killings in California, which he was deemed to be he was found to be responsible for eventually. And another killer, another very well known one. Well, I say killer. He's he's not been convicted yet is the Long Island serial killer Rex Hewerman mm -hmm. and um, another one Gary Ridgway who is known as the Green Green River killing the most common the common denominator is they've all been caught yeah. uh, through D well the, the last three were all caught through DNA evidence and um, they were cold cases and DNA has allowed cold cases to be solved and there's there's probably lots of other serial killers who have never been caught mm -hmm. certainly there is Probably most serial killers have never been caught. For example, Jack the Ripper was never caught. The Zodiac killer in America was never caught uh, because there was never the DNA evidence to solve the case. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, from, from I've read books that, you know, Ted Bundy went on record and John Wayne Gacy and said, I wanted to stop. I stopped for ages, but then something just drew me back in. And it's not something that you think, oh, well, I've done this for a bit now. I might get bored of it. I'm going to go get a job in Tesco. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, do people like that stop? The normal people like us, I think, right, they stop. But then psychopath, serial killers are usually psychopaths and, you know, not not normal people. The, the minds don't kind of function like ours. And um, I don't, you know, when you're talking about, like, the horrific murders, say, like, the Mary Kelly one, that would have been completely spooked normal people out but you're not dealing with normal people who do these kind of things exactly there, there was a theory in, in the, at the time that the awful glut at Miller's court mm. would have perhaps unhinged the mind of the killer but that's it reminds me of anthropomorph, anthropomorphism where an owner of a cat or a dog puts their personality mm -hmm. or human personality into their pet yeah. it's like that with serial killers who are as you say 99 percent of the time psychopaths a normal person can't look in the mind of a psychopath mm -hmm. well, well the, and so when you look at these crimes a normal person thinks what would a normal person do a normal person would go become unhinged after killing someone like they did at mary uh, with mm -hmm. mary kelly but you're dealing with a psychopath who wouldn't really give a damn about it yeah there's there's what you can research all you want, but at the end of the day, no, you cannot get concept of those actual feelings because it's it's just it's just not what normal people do. Yes, you you have to study uh, psychopathic behaviour mm -hmm. and serial killer behaviour. And one of the problems with actually with studying serial killer behaviour is that we were we were discussing a short while ago. Pete Sutcliffe. Yeah. They're ver they're because they're psychopaths. They're also very manipulative. Mm -hmm and they tell uh, an account of their of their murderous career what they think the person wants to hear so yeah. he pretended that he heard voices at a grave which told him to kill because he wanted to be uh, diagnosed as schizophrenic mm. so he's trying to manipulate the the situation so you can't actually necessarily believe what they his, say. his brother actually went on record and actually said that that was made up that actual mm. part i mean a lot of them as well as psychopaths i you know normal a lot of them are narcissists 
narcissistic social puffs. Yeah, well, as, as uh, yes, and because narcissism is a is a common trait amongst psychopaths. Yeah. The other interesting thing about Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, yeah. he killed forty nine people, and when he married, he only killed three, and they were spaced out. So his marriage clearly had a big impact on his mm -hmm. life that kind of changed his ways and he was distracted, he was more satisfied in his life, whatever. As many people would have become uh, in their lives, they, things happened to them in their lives which changed things. And then he stopped altogether and then he was caught by DNA. Mm -hmm. So the Gary Ridgway case is quite interesting in itself. So are you saying basically if Rid Ridgway wasn't caught, he would have not even so much as Jay walked over the road, he was ter he'd stopped? He had stopped before and then they caught him several years later when mm. DNA, uh, when advances in DNA technology allowed them to... to yeah. The other interesting thing about Ridgway is that in the 80s when he was, he was caught in I think, uh, in the early 2000s, yeah. his main murderous career was in the 80s and very early in the 80s he was a, he was a police suspect, he'd, he'd been taken in for questioning, but that also didn't inhibit his behaviour, he didn't say, whoa, I'm, un I'm under questioning, mm. I think I'll stop. He just carried on regardless, actually, mm -hmm. for quite a few years afterwards. So, um, in your expert opinion, you know, let's, I think Let's Me lived for something like it was another 32 years. Why did he just stop? Well, I don't... Th I think... Firstly, I think the Jack the Ripper murders were one phase in the middle of a much longer phase of murdering. I think he started in the early 1870s and went on unt until a, just around perhaps just before 1900. Mm -hmm. And the Ripper phase is just one phase in the middle for a start. I think that because if you look at the murder of Mary of um, Polly Nichols, often taken as the first of the murders, yeah. the, the murder where he was he is closely associated mm -hmm. with. Um, I think it's too kind of perfect, too well. Uh, carried out for it to be someone's first murder. He must have had great confidence to kill someone in the street like that. Yeah. Um, a human being, if you're trying to overpower a human being, even if you're stronger than them, they can. They struggle, they're awkward, their arms are awkward, yeah. their legs are awkward, they'd, they'd do something. It would take a little while to overpower someone, potentially, unless you know what really what you're going to do, unless you're sort of practised in how you're going to do it. And also silently, you, you had to do it quickly, without much struggle and mm -hmm. silently. You, you, you must know what you're doing to yeah. do that. You, you don't just do it for the first time and you're successful like he was with, with, um, with, with Polly Nichols. So that, that's one of the reasons why it's fairly clear to me and the confidence to do it and get away in the street and know mm -hmm. that he can get away and he can do it quickly. You must, have a, you must know what you're doing to Meticulous. do Meticulous. Yeah, so it, I don't think it was planned to the extent that he planned to kill Polly Nichols, yeah. but he had the methodology and how he was going to do sufficient it. With everything yeah yeah he had that sort of planned out in his head so that's the first thing so i don't think he stopped in 1888 mm -hmm. for a start off but i think he stopped probably in the late 1890s perhaps around about 1900 when he was getting old he was he was sort of 50 ish by then mm -hmm. about 50 odd and he had been a, he would have been a carman for about almost 35 years a very str strenuous job yeah but one which would take its toll on his body and he would have been in declining strength by then mm -hmm. and you need to have confidence in your strength to be able to carry out these murders and the other factor is that you're, you're se there's definitely a sexual aspect involved with the stabbing uh, of the victims and so forth and the, most uh, with a lot of men their sexual urges decline at that period as well mm -hmm. so that's another reason why he would have stopped Were they coppers? Interestingly, there's a, an arrest going on over here at the moment. <laughs> the, uh, Very some, eventful. Some police, some Plains Coast police yeah. arrested some sort of person over there, some sort of struggle. Anyway, forget about that for the moment. There's always something to watch in the East End. But when you're regarding uh, what we were talking about, Ed, you know, that sound all seems very plausible. But what, what other examples are you on about? Uh, we're getting, still getting distracted by this thing going on over yeah. there. <laughs> anyway, the... the um, um, yeah. Oh my God. Oh. 
bit of shouting going on as well. The, I think he was very influenced by his mother yeah. and his mother's behaviours. Uh, had engaged in several bigamous step step bigamous marriages, and he had several bigamous stepfathers. Mm. The last died in 1889, and I think the longer it went away from them, and this is the police turning up to arrest some to actually get to take the person off to the uh, police well, station. Rather him than me. better pause the uh, pause the film for a second while the sirens are going. The sirens have stopped, although there's a it, it's, the arrest is still going on. Anyway, let's try and pick up my thread. The um, the longer it was from the the mother being married, I think he calmed down. Mm. Secondly, he opened up businesses, and mm. a lot of successful businessmen or people in the world of commerce are psychopaths. They're not killers, yeah, but they they're successful and politicians. Mm. They're successful in other way walks of life where their ruthlessness as a psychopath. Yeah. And can I just give an example? There, obviously, I'm at the minute writing a book. Thoroughly yes. being meticulous on Mickey Dust. <laughs> I listen, but I'm not saying by any means he was a serial killer, but he was ruthless. He was possibly lots of most psychopaths aren't killers. Yeah, Rick, Mickey Duff. You know, I don't know. I know I'm not as expert on him mm. as you, but his success in the world of boxing and the fact that he had difficulty forming good relationships yeah. with a lot of his 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 stable mm. over the years. Some he did, but mm. most not. I mean, I he was pretty emotionless, and he was perfect to be in that world. And yeah. but, but you know, I mean, but when we were regarding about serial killers, you're talking about let me kind of doing all that and think, well, hang on a minute, I'm going to get into business, and if I am into business and I've got all these um, bigger things, I'm kind of you know, I, I can no longer nip out on a Tuesday night at midnight and kill someone. Yeah, and he may well have got his kicks out of swindling his suppliers or swindling his yeah. customers. That's so does that need for, for something to keep doing, yeah. Yeah, to, to keep to, almost and, breaking the law? And going, hee hee hee, I'm getting yeah. one over on someone, yeah. Yeah, all that sort of thing. Mm. So that, those, there's multiple reasons why he would have <clears throat> stopped at that time. Yeah. One thing in human nature of people who aren't psychopaths, yeah. normal people if you want to call mm -hmm. them that, is that they, they like something to have a nice end, a nice denouement. So they want the the, uh, the Jack the Ripper murders to end with the, uh, the, the the culprit dying, perhaps, or yeah. being arrested, or going to a lunatic asylum, because it gives a sort of closure. Gives, clo yeah, closure, finality. It gives closure. It, the world isn't like that with serial killers. Mm. He probably just petered out of his interest in doing it. That's a much more likely scenario than this uh, uh, melodramatic mm. ending, which yeah. people want. So with this closure aspect we're talking about, um, the DNA, how would you...? Well, as, as, you, as, you, as everyone knows, there's, there's been attempts to solve the Jack the Ripper yeah. case through DNA, and I have said earlier that, you can, that some of these cold cases are solved by DNA, but they're recent cases. Yeah. The chance of being able to solve the, D, the Jack the Ripper murder through DNA, which lots of people think, is pretty... Uh, Zero, pretty much zero, because there's no real authentic artefacts yeah. from the period that you could test against. Um, so it's, it's not a realistic prospect. But uh, there have been books, you know, yeah. this book here, Naming Jack the Ripper. I've done a film about it very recently by Russell Edwards. Yeah. Trying to solve it, but signed by Russell Edwards. Try, trying to solve it by DNA. Lots of people think, yes, that must be how yeah. you can solve it. He must have, you know... Must because it's the effect, it's 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 the headlines, and obviously yeah. for people who are not really clued up, oh well, it's it's you know, but it's it's amazing now, like you know, hundred odd years on, where people will kind of just you talked about the recent ones, that possibly yeah, it can be done, but over a hundred years ago, it's needle in the haystack stuff. Hundred thirty, yeah, however many years ago, yeah. hundred thirty six years ago. The other interesting case, I don't know if you know about this one, this guy Win Weston Davis, uh -huh. who again. Um, I've got his signed book from him. I met him briefly. Mm. Um, he tried to solve the case by claiming that he was related to Mary Kelly mm. and wanted to have her dug up from the cemetery that she's in in, in Leighton mm. uh, to extract DNA from the bones to prove that his uh, that she was related to her and that the story which he'd kind of concocted mm. was about her was true to solve the case. Of course, where Mary Kelly is actually buried 
no one really knows. Yeah. It's, it's within an area roughly as big as from here to this uh, bush over mm -hmm. there. And there's probably 200 bodies in that bit there, which bones are Mary Kelly's yeah. now. You would never be able to divulge. And, to, and, and that's the bloke screaming as he's being arrested over there. Blimey, not going quietly. Wow. Blimey. And <laughs> welcome, welcome to London. He's actually blimey, strapped up on something, like some sort of... Uh, it's like uh, Hannibal Lecter strapped up on yeah. something. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. and it's in. For for the for the they'd have to get permission from all yeah. of the relatives of all the <coughs> two hundred people they're disturbing all these graves yeah. just to find a bone that supposedly Mary Kelly to supposedly uh, link it to to Win Weston Davis's mm. uh, to his family mm. when actually the evidence that he supplies in the book that he is related to is. Is is totally yeah. ludicrous, frankly. Mm -hmm. but, that, but that's another example of someone trying to prove the case through through DNA. The Jack the Ripper case through DNA, which I believe will never be able to be, will never be able never. to be done. No. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean, there's a lot of people. Do we really want to solve it? Well, you're asking the wrong person there, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> no, but you know, even even I think, and I think a lot of Ripperologists have that theory um, oh. of, well, if we could, then. You know, and even if you put it in concrete evidence in front, they think, well, yeah, but it's just never going to happen. Look, the reality is, I know that I can't prove it 100% conclusively yeah. to everybody's satisfaction that it was Lechmere. I, I think he's the most, the best suspect mm -hmm. uh, by far, and I'd like to think that most people, when they're presented with the evidence about Lechmere, would agree with me. But I'm not foolish enough to think yeah. that it's going to be conclusively solved just because I go around saying it was Lechmere and presenting this, that and the other mm. evidence about it, because other people will inevitably have their own, their own theory. But I think what's different from you, Ed, is you actually go out um, and you're meticulous, you're, you know, you're methodical, you're, you literally put a lot of research and time and where there is people in the industry who can just think and, and even though, but it's outrageous and it gets the headlines like the, the certain people you mentioned and, and I think that's why yours is always respected. It's, you know, it's, it's almost educational. Do you know what I mean? I remember talking to Paul Begg and he said uh, a lot of the Spitalfield uh, councils played part of the Jack the Ripper down there because they don't want to, but it's actually history. It, it is part of the social history. Um, and yours is a very educated, um, you know the, the research you've done, your likes of your yourself and your Richard Jones and all this, and um, the, you know those are the those are the people that you put hours and hours of the way I use the word educated research, and there's a lot a lot of people doing it. Well, that, I I do it personally because that's just the way I way I am. I personally, I, I've spoken to you about this before. I'm personally not against the more. Uh, fairground aspect, mm. or if you want to call it that, mm. the the Chamber of Horrors type aspect uh, of it, or the London Dungeons aspect. Yeah. I went there recently and saw it. I went, went to the Chamber of Horrors and the and the London Dungeons. Um, they're very popular. The mm -hmm. Jack the Ripper aspects there are very popular. They they peddle essentially the the um, the mytho mythological aspects of it, the cape mm. and the fog and the and the big shiny knife. Mm. But that is intrinsic that's part and parcel of the whole thing i'm not against that either actually mm -hmm. because it, it is what it is it, it, the jack the ripper thing isn't just um a sensible it, it, I, I adopt a sensible approach, a sensible approach. Yeah. i adopt, adopt a sort of chronological approach because that's how i am but and, if and we it, didn't have that guy in the cape in the cloak with a, with a bag we'd have the invisible man <laughs> so it's literally, you know, yes, no one knows, but yeah. we can say we can say it looks like him just for the. And if it wasn't for the whole mytho mytho mythological aspect, the Stephen Knight aspect, yeah, and all these other <laughs> books, even the Haley Rubenhold, even um, Russell Edwards, which I think is a is a, is, you know, I know Russell Edwards, but his book, I think, and his theory is, I think, a load of nonsense. It brings millions of people into the field who take an interest in the field. And look, some of them are going to watch my channel as a result yeah. of it, aren't they? Absolutely, so, of course. But we spoke about earlier, people from China, Japan, all coming, and it, it, it does almost bring, like, uh, economy to this little area. It does. I um, we, We're slightly going off topic here, mm. but 
I helped uh, re re the redesign of the Happy Days Chip Shop, which is a location where yeah. the, the graffiti, yeah. the, the Jews graffiti and the apron was left to try and bring more trade into the area. You said there's a, a ch I haven't seen it yet, but there's apparently a... a uh, Jack uh, the Ripper baked potato shop. Yeah. <laughs> Opened <laughs> in the last six months. A Jack the Ripper back baked potato shop on Brick Lane, mm -hmm. opposite the bagel shop, I believe, which yeah. I might go and have a look at a bit later on. Yeah. And um, all these things, some people might sneer and turn their nose up at it, but it, look, it brings business into yeah. the area. I'm all in favour of business coming into the area, uh, business in the area being generated. I don't really like the idea of tours coming in, mm. looking around and going out about again and not spending any money into the local economy. I think Jack the Ripper should be, I've always believed this, Jack the Ripper should be something that should be embraced in the area to bring money into the area and help the local economy actually. Mm. It would help everybody. Yeah, and get, get tourists to drop their money into the into yeah. the East End. And it's not dying anytime soon, let's be honest. Mm. It's only rapidly growing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And yeah, I, I quite agree. Anyway, thank you for this conversation, oh, Jamie. And please, as always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share, like and comment below. What do you think?